This video is sponsored by Capture One, the brand new version Capture One 22 is available now, so get your 30 day free trial by clicking the link in the description. All right, here's the deal. In Edmonton, where I live, it's currently minus 28 degrees Celsius. It feels like minus 35 with the wind chill. So I've been loving going outside and exploring lately, but I think for this one, we're gonna stay inside. What is up people, Dunny here, and today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most powerful tools that you can use in your color grading. And I'm talking about video, photo, doesn't matter, this tool exists in most color grading applications. And of course, that is the curves. Now you might already have a basic understanding of the curves, but there's a lot of little hidden gems that most people don't know about. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what the curves are, all those little hidden gems that you might not already know, and we're gonna go through a couple of applications applications where you might want to use this. Okay, so for now I've hidden all the other tools so we can just focus on the curves. This is basically what curves looks like. It's gonna be a little bit different depending on which software you're in, but generally they look similar and they all do the same thing. So it looks like a graph. We've got a horizontal axis down here. We've got a vertical axis up here. And then we've got this line going across the middle. And basically what we're looking at is input versus output. So what did your photo look like before? And what did it look like after you made changes using the curves? And the scale goes from zero all the way up to 255. Zero being the darkest blacks and 255 being the whitest whites. The bottom left corner being those blacks, top right corner corner being 255 on both the horizontal and vertical axis, so that's whitest whites. I know it sounds a little confusing, but I'll just show you what it does. Now, what we've got here is a grayscale, so we've got all the way from blackest blacks all the way up to whitest whites. And one of the things that I like about Capture One's curves is that as I drag my cursor across here, you can see that orange line showing me the part that I'm currently pointing at. So if there's something in a photo that I want to know, oh, how bright is that on the curve scale, I can just point at it and it'll show me. But basically with curves, we can make as many points as we want and change things as much as we want. So let's say this this part right here, somewhere in kind of the lower shadowy areas here, I can make a point and then I can move that up. And then let's say maybe over here, I wanna move that back down so I can make a curve or we can move our black and white point. So this is our black point here. If I start to move that black point up, you'll notice that the black part starts to get gray, but it does affect the whole line. It's not just the black point all alone. You'll notice that this middle point here is now significantly higher than where it started. And if I push that all the way up, we make a straight line across the top, which is going to be 100% white because literally every point on our curves line is at 255, which again, is completely white. If I move that black point the other way, I'm gonna start moving the whole line down below that middle 45 degree angle and things are starting to get darker. If I move it all the way over to the right, we get almost a completely black line. It won't quite let me get rid of all the white. The other way that we can do that is by moving the line from the white point downwards that's gonna give us completely black. Or if we move the white point to the left, you'll see that now the line is going above where it was, so we can brighten things up that way. And then of course, like I mentioned before, we can make as many points as we want in the middle to start to mess with our curves. Okay, so pulling up an actual photo so we can see what it looks like. We've got a bit of a graph in the back and you get used to reading these graphs to know which parts of the graph are showing you which parts of the photo. But again, you can kind of hover your cursor over it and generally it will show you what you're looking at. And again, we can move our black point so we can move that up and we start to get this kind of faded thing. Again, if I move it all the way up, it just becomes all white. Uh, vice versa, I can move my white point around so make everything brighter or or make everything darker. And then again, we can drag from the middle to make things brighter and darker, but protect the black and white points. And then we can make as many points as we want to really mess with things as we go. And we'll talk more about how to use this in a minute. Real quick before we move on, I wanna tell you about this video sponsor, Capture One. 
Capture One is the photo editing software that I've been showing you curves on and showing you all these photos on. And I've been using Capture One for about a year now, and I'm so happy with the results that I'm getting. It's super fast. The way that it interprets files from my camera is the most accurate that I've seen, so you get the best colors. And on top of that, the tools that they offer in the software make it so flexible and powerful for your editing. In Capture One 22, they've added tools like HDR Merge, Panorama Stitching, Auto Rotate for batches of images, as well as wireless tethering for Canon cameras and more. I recently did a whole video on HDR Merge and Panorama Stitching in Capture One 22, so you can check that out. But I definitely also just recommend that you go down to the link in the description, get your 30 day free trial and try it out for yourself. Huge thank you to Capture One for supporting the channel. Now, at the top of the curves, you'll notice that there's not just this RGB curve, but there's also Luma, red, green, and blue. So we've actually got, in this specific case, five different curves that we can use. Now, you may have noticed that when I dragged the RGB curve downwards, the colors get a lot more intense. One of the nice things about having the Luma curve, and some programs have the Luma curve and some don't, but one of the nice things is that you can do that same move and it'll affect the brightness of the photo without necessarily affecting the color. So when it's all reset back to neutral like this, if I drag this down, it keeps those colors the same. Whereas if I do the same move with the RGB, see how much more punchy the oranges and blues and stuff get? You might not necessarily want that. And that works vice versa too. If I bring this up, you'll notice that it starts to kind of desaturate those colors. They almost get like yellowy. Whereas if I do the same move with the Luma, it pretty much keeps everything where it was color wise. We still got nice oranges over here. Now, this is kind of a taste thing. You might like what happens when you change the RGB curves and it messes with the colors a little bit, like gives you a little bit more saturation than what you had before. Generally making things darker will give them a little bit more saturation. But for example, on a photo like this, if I was trying to give this a little bit more contrast, you can see what it does to my skin. It starts to make my face look a little funny. Whereas if I do that same move, add a little bit of contrast using the Luma curves, it keeps it in its desaturated state. And then I can go over and use my saturation or my color tools or whatever I want to mess with the colors from there. But the curves themselves aren't messing with anything that maybe I've already done in those other tools. So that's the Luma curve. But then we've also got red, green, and blue. Now in digital imagery, we're looking at pixels that are made of red, green and blue and the combination of those gives us what we see in front of us. So every single pixel in this photo is showing up as some combination of those three colors and when they mix together we get the color that we see. And so basically what we're doing with those three curves is adding more or less of those colors into our photo. Now one thing that I find handy when I'm using the red, green and blue curves is knowing the opposites of what those colors are. So what am I going to get more of when I reduce red? So as I increase this, we get more red. As I decrease it and we're getting less red, which means more of just the green and blue, we're gonna see more cyan. So if for example, I wanted more cyan in a photo, more of that kind of tealy color, I can just reduce the red. If I want more green, I can move that up. If I want the opposite of green, which is magenta, I can move that down. If I want more blue, I can move the blue up. If I want more yellow, I can move that down. So it's really up to you. You can think of it as just like more or less red, more or less green, more or less blue, or you could think of it as more red or more cyan more green or more magenta, more blue or more yellow. You've kind of got all of these different ways of thinking of it. And other than that, these curves work the same way as the RGB and Luma curve. RGB, which I didn't really explain before, is just a combination of all three red, green, and blue. So you're moving all of them up or all of them down in the same amount. So going back to the red here, we've still got our black to white scale. So if we wanted to add more red into, let's say the sky or the bright parts of the image, I can make a couple of points and then drag up close to the top here. And you see that I'm adding more red into the sky. And let's say I wanted to add more blue down into the shadows so I can make a couple of points and I can drag up on my shadows. So now I've got more blue 
in the shadow area. Okay, so now we know what the RGB curves are, the Luma curve that doesn't affect the colors, and the red, green, and blue curve. We have a general idea of what they do, now how do we use them? So what I wanna do is show you a couple of the ways that I regularly use these tools in my photos and videos. Some of these are just really basic things, and some of them are kinda of cool little tips and tricks that some people might not know about. One of the most common ways that people use the curves is to create an S curve to either add or remove contrast. And the way that that works is basically you're going to make a point down at the bottom, make a point up near the top, and you're going to drag them in opposite directions to create this kind of S shape. And that just added a whole bunch of contrast to our photo. So before and after. And you can do this either way as well. So if we wanted to remove contrast, we can drag up on the shadows and down on the highlights. And now we've taken away contrast. So before and after. Now you can do this either on your RGB or your Luma. So if you didn't want it to affect the colors, I can do this here. So it stays a lot more kind of of that desaturated look, which it looked like a lot more before. Whereas if I do it with the RGB again here, you can see it makes the green a lot more intense when I add that contrast. The other thing that I like to do with curves a lot is to set my black and my white points. So now if we look at this kind of graph in the background here, you can see that our brightest point only comes up to about here. Our darkest point only goes down to there. So if I wanted to set my black and white points, I can drag my line to meet those points. Now it's also adding contrast because I'm making the bright parts brighter and the dark parts darker, but look at the difference in the line from where it was to start with. And here's what it looks like before and after. This is really handy if you're doing video and you are correcting for some kind of a flat profile or a log profile. You can actually use this to try and set your black and white points. And then within this curve, I can also start to mess with my contrast as well. Now, kind of a stylistic thing that you can do with curves is add a bit of a fade, and people call this a film fade or whatever you wanna call it. I've got some kind of basic edits done to this photo, and now I want to add that film fade kind of look. All I'm gonna do is grab my black point here, and I'm gonna drag it upwards. And you'll start to see, especially down at the bottom here where we can see a lot of black, you'll start to see that turn into kind of a gray area. And that just kind of mimics the look that we might get from film that didn't have those extreme bright whites and extreme blacks, it kind of fades them all into gray. And if you wanna do the opposite with the whites, you can bring that white point down. This photo doesn't really have much going on up in that area. But if you look at this leaf right here, as I bring this down, it starts to kind of fade them all into gray. You start to lose a little bit of detail, but it's got that kind of aesthetic to it. So before the black fade, after the black fade, before the white fade, after the white fade. So we can get that kind of moody, filmy look just by using the curves. The other thing that I really like the red, green, and blue curves for is setting white balance for certain portions of a photo. So if we take a look at this photo, it looks like it's maybe a little bit too cool. So if I start to warm that up, it starts to look a lot better down in this area here where my trees actually look green. But now I've got this kind of orangey yellow going on up in my sky, in my clouds there. So then like if I try and pull that back, as I pull it back and I get nice, clean, bright white in the sky, now I'm starting to see a whole bunch of extra blue in my shadows down on the mountain. So what I can do is I can set my sky where I feel like that's looking pretty good up there. So I've got nice, clean whites in my clouds. And then I can go over to, let's say my blue curve and down at the bottom here, I can see what point that is. So there's a huge spike in the amount of information because so much of the photo is in that shadow area. I'm going to make a couple of points here just to anchor it. And then I'm going to drag it down. So there's less blue in those portions of the photo. So now those trees down here are looking a lot more green again. That looks a little bit more how that mountain would look if there wasn't like a, a haze in front of it, creating that kind of blue look. Even this is looking a little bit blue. So I can pull that back just a little bit. And that did a really nice job without adding too much of the yellow into the sky. So if we undo that curve, you can see all the blue happening on the mountain. If we redo it, you can see that it fixed the mountain up without affecting the sky too much. Now it might be looking a little bit too green, so we can go into our green, maybe use our black point to bring that down a little bit. And so we've used the blue and the green curves to adjust 
our white balance, but only in certain portions of the photo. So before our curves adjustments, and after our curves adjustments. And then coming back to our pyramid here, one of the things that I really love to do with our red, green, and blue curves is add some color contrast into a photo. This looks similar to kind of split toning. So what we wanna do is add different colors into different brightness parts of the photo. For example, let's grab our red curve here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull some of the red out of the shadows, which as we know from earlier is going to add cyan into them. So if I pull it all the way down, you see almost the whole photo because that curve is affecting so much of the photo, we're getting lots. So I'm just gonna pull it down just a handful and then up in the higher parts and the brighter parts, I'm actually going to add some red into it. So I'm adding contrast, I'm doing an S curve, but I'm doing it only on the red channel. And so what that's doing is in this dark area, you can see on all these dark parts, we're getting that kind of greeny blue cyan color. Whereas in the bright parts, it's starting to look a little bit more red. If we look at the before and after, before and after, we call this color contrast. And it's similar to contrast in terms of brightness, where it makes it more distinguishable between different parts of the photo, but it's doing it with color instead of brightness. Let's make it a little bit more exaggerated here so we can really see it. And you can get pretty wild with this before and after. Now it might be a little too pinky. So what we might want to do is add a little bit of yellow back into the bright part. So what we can do is make kind of an opposite shape in our blue. What I'll do is I'll bring down in the highlights. And so if we remember that's adding yellow, removing blue adds yellow into the highlights, which is going to balance out those pinks a little bit into more of an orange. You can see how pink it is. And then as I pull this down, it makes the whole sky a little bit more of an orange. So if we look at before and after, using contrast and contrast curves in the colors. And this is a really nice finisher once you're done editing a photo. So for example, this photo is already like edited. It's already had contrast and stuff applied to it. This is a way to just kind of like make it pop a little bit more. It separates the dark parts of the pyramid itself and the bright parts in the sky. It separates those two from each other. And it just really makes it pop. This is a very extreme example, but if I dial that back a little bit here, there, that's a little bit more tasteful. Now here's the real test. Can we do all of that together to edit a photo using just curves? So the first thing that I'm noticing is that this is a way too blue. So what we're gonna do is go into our blue curve. I'm gonna pull down using my black point to kind of even out my white balance. Maybe a little bit in the green as well. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go into my Luma. I'm gonna just like bring up the general brightness. Maybe add a little bit of contrast to the image as well. There we go. I'm gonna use my RGB curves to do a bit of that fade and just a little bit of contrast in the RGB curve. And then using the red, curve, I'm going to add a little bit of that color contrast in there as kind of a stylistic. So before and after. There's a lot more that I would love to do with this photo, but just using curves, I think we got pretty far. So that is the curves tool. Like I said before, this is pretty similar across both photo and video editing software. It might be a little bit different depending on what you're using, but the tool generally does the same job. It is so powerful. There is so much you can do with it if you really understand how to use it. It can replace a bunch of other tools in your arsenal, and there are lots of cool tricks that you can do with it. It as well. Speaking of which, I'd love to hear your favorite trick that you like to do with the curves. Leave a comment down below and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.